This is an X-15, a rocket plane that made 199 research flights for the U.S. Air Force and NASA between 1959 and 1968. The X-15s were carried aloft by a B-52, tucked under a wing. When the B-52 reached its highest altitude, the X-15 was dropped, its pilot would start the rocket engines, and off they would go. Two flights entered space, which by international definition begins at an altitude of 100 kilometers. The X-15's top speed was 4,500 miles per hour, or in civilized units, 7,300 kilometers per hour. Another way of describing its speed is in relation to the speed of sound. The fastest X-15 flight reached Mach 6.7, that is, 6.7 times the speed of sound. What happens when an airplane, bullet, rocket, or other object exceeds the speed of sound? A shock, also known as a sonic boom, forms. The shock is an area of very high pressure. Here are pictures of X-15 models in a supersonic wind tunnel. The photographic technique used enables us to see differences in air density and pressure. The shocks are these lines coming off the nose and other structures of the aircraft. Notice the angle the shocks make at their apex. Here's at a speed of Mach 3.5, and this one is at Mach 6. So, why do shocks form, and why is the angle of the shock apex smaller for higher speeds? Here's why. The red dot is an object, let's say it's an airplane, emitting sound. If it's stationary, the sound waves travel symmetrically in all directions. The circles represent the high pressure part of the sound wave, the compressions. But when the airplane moves, as it is doing here, the compressions are no longer concentric. Each compression is still a circle, is still centered on the place where it was born. But the different compressions were created at different places because the plane was moving. As a result, they are closer together in front of the plane and spaced farther apart behind. This causes the famous Doppler effect, the change in pitch or frequency you may have noticed when a car goes by. But when the plane exceeds the speed of sound, the air compressions actually overlap, creating the shock. As the plane goes faster, you can see the apex angle of the shock becomes smaller. Let's derive an expression for the angle. Here I've zoomed in and slowed down the animation of the airplane traveling at Mach 2, twice the speed of sound. And let's freeze the animation now. Notice that at this moment in time, a new compression, that little tiny circle, has just been born. Here I've added some lines so that we can use some geometry and trigonometry to figure out the angle at the apex of the shock. This middle line here is the path of the airplane. It's the symmetry axis of the shock. This is one side of the shock, the left side of the airplane. And this line is perpendicular to the shock. And altogether, that makes a right triangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out this angle right here, which I'm going to call A. Now, just to remind you that the sine of an angle, the sine of A in this case, is the opposite side of the right triangle over the hypotenuse. So we need to figure out what the opposite side and the hypotenuse, what those lengths are. Here's the hypotenuse. Remember, distance is velocity times time, so here V is the speed of the airplane, T is the time from one compression to the next compression, the period. And the opposite side is the speed of sound times the period. So the opposite side, speed of sound times the period T. Hypotenuse is the speed of the airplane times T. The T's, of course, cancel. And that leaves us with Vs over V. So the angle A is the arc sine, the inverse sine of Vs over V. And there's our solution. Keep in mind that's half of the angle of the, of the apex. So just as a quick example, for Mach 2, which is what was depicted here in this diagram, A is the arc sine. Vs over V is one half. V is twice the speed of sound, and so Vs over V is one half. Plugging that into a calculator, 
arc sine of 1 over 2 gives us 30 degrees, which actually, when you take trig, that's one of the standard angles you learn. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So 30 degrees is the value of A for Mach 2, or the full apex angle. That is the angle between the left side of the shock and the right side of the shock. This angle right here is 60 degrees. Let's go ahead and do another example at a higher speed so that we can see that, in fact, the angle is less. So for Mach 6, which was the highest speed in the simulations that I showed you earlier, A is the arc sine, the inverse sine of 1 over 6. which gives us about 9.6 degrees, which again is half the full apex angle. So we're gonna call it roughly 19 degrees for the full angle at the apex of the shock.